Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, as Eos, right? Sorry, I mean, I said, your name. I said, I am a researcher at University of Manchester. I am completing my PhD, so I hope to have everything done by the end of this month, hopefully. But anyway, um, as I mentioned, I would like to discuss a case study to explore the computer tomography volumes using multiple degrees of freedom uh, for hydrocarbon exploration. So uh, this study is an initial work, and I would like to underline that work, that, that work precisely, because it's, a, it's part of our ongoing research in which um, <coughs> it's a research in via interaction and 3D techniques for manipulating and selecting a 3D object. And uh, this short paper, we investigated the use of via interaction to explore and segment tomographic and volumetric data from porous rocks. Yes, this data is frequently used in the oil and gas industry. As computer tomography has the advantage of doing explorations in a non destructive way. Particularly, we aim at the capillary trapping process because this technique is part of the capture and storage of carbon dioxide, which is used to state how much carbon dioxide can be stored securely per unit of the rock volume. There's a significant body of research work uh, focused on these observations, particularly for capillary trapping, because it has so many advantages, particularly to combat climate change and more environmental issues. However, the process is out of scope. I'm not a professional in oil and the gas industry and just from the uh, computer perspective, but it's important to know what your scientists need to use to manipulate and for the selection of computer tomography volumes to determine the porosity distribution of a core sample. So, so we investigated a problem in visualization and interaction with said visualizations to determine the best peripheral combination for a specific use case in visualization, which is exploration of these tomography scans. So this study will be a specialized user community where expertise can be assumed and where custom hard work is at least possible. It makes sense to study this, which peripheral is most effective in this context. Even though that is a constrained context, it has some um, impact on the large field and it's worth reporting to that one. Having said that, we consider, yeah, we considered a specific example from the science exploring in interactive visualization of computer tomography 3D volumes. We use a micro CT image uh, that were cemented into solid water and gas phases. And these images were obtained from the British Geological Survey database. We reconstructed a 3D model that represents the residual gas trapping in pack beds on glass, uh, beads at the pore scale. And then we explore via LISO the efficiency of a user to obtain a specific clipping volume using different input devices, each with multiple degrees of freedom. The goal of this, uh, ex uh, this experiment is to obtain a volume, as you can see on the screen, which is uh, with those dimensions in voxels using different input devices, each with multiple degrees of freedom. Now, for this, uh, we, well, all the programming has been done using Python, the version 3.7. Uh, the visualization package that we use is the Australian National University Drishti, which is built uh, by uh, AJ Limage. And the version that we use is a version 2.64. And the reason why we're using Drishti is compared to other ones, firstly, uh, Drishti provides a sculpting facility via clipping planes and bricks, which are the functions that we're using. And additionally, Drishti has the advantage to be integrated into the software that we developed for this interaction, which is LISU. Um, LISU is a framework in which uh, enables the use of multiple degrees of freedom at the, uh, uh, at the time, at the same time. Plus, it solves problems in terms of interoperability or compatibility as well. Here is the process that um, about the image segmentation part for the capillary trapping. The image number A is when we load the image, uh, sorry, the models into the Drishti. 
And from B to C are all the processes. As we said before, we are using here the translation of the bricks. Bricks in Drishti is when you split the image or the volume into chunks of vectors we want to see in that way. So we were able to translate those uh, bricks across the screen, also the rotation of the camera. And finally, we apply a clip and plane. The advantage of using the bricks in here is that the bricks allow you to have an individual clip and plane per brick. So it was able to give um, it has the advantage of us to not only reveal a part, as you can see on let us see on the top, but also to create from that perspective a little bit for the cropping of the image. So that's that's, that's a good thing to have from this visualization. Um, so. Well, before, 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 before continuing on that, it's important to know that in this, in this case, we look to images. The first one is a binary one, which is the yellow one. And the other one is the injection of hydrocarbon. Uh, sorry. I, I, I can pronounce that. Sorry, my Spanish English is not that good. <laughs> Hydrochloric acid, yeah. Uh, in which we can see that one in highlighted in, in gray, in gray scale. Now, what's important to us is about the measure, the, the, the results that we've had about the interaction. So we have in here a graph and we can tell you the measure of, cent of central tendency included a mean of 19.81 seconds and the standard deviation of 3.11 with, with a lower hinge of 70, 70, 67 seconds and an upper hinge of 103 seconds which is quite reasonable for these kind of experimentations. Uh, we collected 70 trials for this particular one. So um, we can see here good results. But more importantly, what can, what can tell us is that this information about what is the best uh, peripheral for this kind of uh, interaction? Well, we continue splitting into different plots. As you can see here, uh, either, okay. I skip that part. We use five different sectors for, 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 this, for this kind of experiment, which is uh, we selected uh, the combination of input devices that ranges from three degrees of freedom to up to 12 degrees of freedom to have a wide, a wide range of degrees of freedom to manipulate. Uh, the controllers included uh, the Oculus Rift, which is identified by the GPC, sorry, HMD. Uh, GPC is identified as a gameplay or a gamepad. Uh, the QW is a combination of the keyboard and the mouse. And these two are a combination with the mouse with all the uh, 3D, uh, uh, 3D dedicated uh, software called the Space Navigator. So the combination of those, it can give us multiple degrees of freedom. Uh, that's why I'm saying, that's why I'm saying that we are using, uh, uh, when we say we're using up to 12 degrees of freedom, that means that the operator can have on each hand up to six degrees of freedom to manipulate the image across the, the screen. Here, the result is quite interesting because we can see that, well, as, as expected, the keyboard of the mouse, because it's universal, everybody can uh, pretty much operate and do these three techniques with those components. However, it is quite interesting also to see that with the highest degrees of freedom, we have also a really good performance. Maybe this one in here with 10 degrees of freedom uh, uh, skewed data, but that means that there may be some moments that it could be quite a poor performance. However, interestingly, and also a little bit disappointed because we have really good uh, expectations of have a really good performance with the Oculus Rift, <laughs> we can see that we have the worst performance compared to the to the other to the, to the, to the means of uh, visualization. The reason for this is like, uh, unfortunately, when we are doing the test, we experience like a jerky system of movement, uh, particularly when we are trying to perform the clip plane that requires some kind of level of precision. But overall, we can see here that the, the best time we can find in these three means of interaction. Now, the experiment also lasted for five days. That's why we collected all the kind of data. And 
we can see here that obviously the worst days are, and I say obviously because the first day we expected to have a really bad result, mostly because it's the first time that the user is experiencing with the interaction. So it's a process of learning, a learnability that would take uh, across the time. After the second day of the experiment, we can see progress and also we can see really good reasonable times. Except for the last time that we can assume that that's because the operator was completely tired or completely bored or something happened, particularly for the, um, for the game path and also for the HMD that we have the worst performance, uh, performance spot. Overall, we can see that again, for all the different standardization, we have the three, uh, the three components, the best time. Now, having said that, that's a part for that's precisely for the for for the interaction part. For the result of the capillary trapping, uh, we got this particular warning here, and our results from this perspective is that we have an approximation of eleven percent to twenty two percent, according to uh, experimental results in terms of porosity, which means that these are quite reasonable standards in terms of for, for this particular sample in terms of capillary trapping, which is, which is, a, which is a good thing. However, uh, these results also can be checked with the link down here, it's explained regardless to the capillary trapping process as well. And also we need more fun, more searching, more, sorry, more research uh, to compare the results that we, have, that we have here. So as our results, Uh, we can say that the best peripheral combination was still the keyboard and the mouse for, for this experiment, but also those with higher degrees of freedom, which open a possibility to keep exploring this type of setups and also integrating for further research in terms of interaction and 3D manipulation. Um, but else also, um, as I said, is part of ongoing research. Currently we're working with including uh, large sample data and also comparisons with other frameworks for compare the performance. And we are the last stages for this particular work. Um, as I said, we need for the research to confirm the findings that we are showing in here. But the value of this is to demonstrate that we can combine 3D techniques using these particular frameworks for improve the interaction and also to reach to this particularly uh, results that we're showing here. So everything was fine. Thank you very much.